everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, I am gonna be doing something fun today. Fingers crossed that it works out the way I want. This is going to be a Northern Lights inspired painting and it is going to be black light reactive. So we'll see what happens. So this, this color, uh, this is my base coat color and before I added all my flow trawl to it I just did a coat on the canvas and let it dry because I don't want to risk scraping down to the canvas and then when you have the black light on it even if you don't see it with your naked eye it will show up because of the black light the canvas will shine through as purple uh, white shines as purple particularly titanium light. The color that this is, is the Thalo Blue in Liquitex, mixed with Artist Loft Neon Blue, so this will react to the black light, and a touch of, where did it go? There it is the Grumbacher Mixing White. So this is zinc white, basically. Zinc white is actually transparent and titanium white is opaque. And I want this to have a nice blendy effect. And if I use the titanium white in it, it will be much more opaque than the other paints. So it would really stand out particularly under the black light. So I'm using this Mixing White. Um, the green that I have here, I didn't have the genuine neon green, so I just mixed the blue and the yellow, ah, and the yellow together, the neon blue and the neon yellow, with a touch, again, of the, oh, not that one, the mixing white, yes, yes, the mixing white. The blue is a mixture of the Neon Blue and Liquitex Basics Brilliant Blue. I find just adding a bit of another color to it kind of tones down that, you know, this is neon. This will react under a black light feel. I, I like for them to be toned down a little bit. And this here, this purple, is the fluorescent purple from Blick uh, Studio Acrylics with a tiny bit of um, Liquitex Basics Quinacridone Magenta, which I don't have next to me. This is leftover from the uh, Sunset, which really came out beautiful, and Josh said, I'm not allowed to sell it. so. <laughs> I guess if someone wants to buy it, I'm going to have to make another one. This dark color here, which I have mixed to do the trees, this will be, where did you go? The uh, phthalo green from Basics with just a tiny bit of the Mars black to deepen it up. And that is our colors. So these colors have been mixed. Basically, um, I added Floetrol until it was the right consistency. The consistency that we're working with is about a three on the consistency scale, maybe. Yeah, it's about a three. So it's making a mound on a mound. You don't want it to be too thin when you're doing this kind of technique. I'm not looking for cells, so these are all mixed the same, even though I'm actually gonna be swiping this. We're gonna see what happens. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I don't have a reference photo. This is just gonna be 100% pure imagination. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration card? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. 
There are 42 technique cards and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube to give you the full tutorial, all of the paint colors, the exact paint brands, the consistency, the medium that we're using. This picture here is associated with that video. This box here is a tip for this particular technique. And then we have a color palette here at the bottom that goes along with that particular painting. And then these two boxes can actually be used as the basis of a two color palette. So you can have a very minimalist approach or you can add to those two colors and come up with your own palette. There are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors, just use some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus cards with the, uh, the techniques and all of the other palettes with different techniques and you have thousands of combinations. You will not run out of ideas. These are available at my website, GinaDeLuca.net and brand new, also available on Amazon. So some folks who were having issues with uh, ordering through the website, now you can get them off of Amazon and I'll be honest, they're probably faster at shipping than I am. <laughs> Sometimes I order it and it seems like it's in my door five minutes. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do here is lay down this base coat. I do want to try to save some of this just in case I need it, but I certainly don't want to skimp. One of the good things about doing this first, putting, putting this down and letting it dry, it actually lets me know how dark this is going to dry. And I have had in the past a painting that I did and I loved while it was wet and when it dried it was very dark and it lost its contrast so I may have to go in with a brush unfortunately and touch it up but it was the lady in the water painting uh, which I just loved but the blue dried so dark the flow trowel, here's a pro tip. Flow trowel is white. It's a cloudy white. And when you add it to your paints, it does make your paints appear to be lighter. So if you add it to a red, the red might appear more pink. But when it dries, it dries clear. So it darkens back up on you. And if you like the way that your painting looks better when the flow trowel is still wet and it gets too dark, what you can do is add a bit of white to it, just a tiny bit, just to lighten it up a hair and it will maintain that brightness. So like when I add flow trowel to dioxazine purple it makes a very bright purple but when it dries it almost look black almost not quite which is why i use it in place of black sometimes in brushwork but if you like it better when it's got that bright purple effect that it gets from the flow trawl then just add a little bit of white to it and you're in business all right my base coat is down and now I'm going to put in the colors that I'm going to swipe. Okay, switching to voice over here. So I am putting in the colors that I'm going to swipe. You will notice that I am not in the center of my painting. I want it to be a little lower in the, so the rule of thirds, if you're, 
not familiar, I highly recommend looking that up. It is crucial in the element of design when you are taking a photo or doing a painting you don't actually want your focus to be in the dead center of the painting typically or the photo usually it's going to be slightly off center uh, so uh, so I'm taking a paper towel I'm going to I spray the paper towel lightly with water to make it easier to swipe just lay it gently in there and drag it on down. I was going for a reflection type thing, that mirrored reflection, but uh, you'll see what happened. <laughs> there was an oopsie. And there were some cells that I didn't like, and so I'm trying to fix those blending that out a bit. Wish I had swiped again in that pink and brought more of that pink out. Okay, so now I'm just going to lay in my tree the basically the heights of them. And when you're doing a reflection, you want to remember that you want your height of the reflection to reflect the height of the of the tree. So you don't want them all to be the exact same length in the water, in the reflection. Just a thing to keep in mind. I am sure that I will come up with a better way to do this. This was just my first attempt at doing something like this with the fluid acrylics. Lots of learning curves and such. And so now I'm trying to figure out how to make these look like trees. <laughs> and you'll see, I try out a couple of different techniques. And I'm like, eh, no, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> it's all trial and error. Maybe next time I'll put some in a little squeeze bottle. That might make it easier. Might keep me from making the mistake that I make in a little bit. You know, so with these being fluid acrylics, it was really hard to get like a genuine tree look. But because this is Impressionism, it doesn't have to necessarily look just like a tree. You, you're just trying to trick the eye into thinking that's what's there. That is the beauty of Impressionism. It's just it, the imagination does so much of the work. It's kind of more about uh, getting the eye to see what you want it to see. And still, you know, trying different techniques and figuring out the best way. Making a mess. Definitely think I will go with the squeeze bottle next time if I try this. It just might make it a little easier to control. Probably wind up being a lot faster too. And this is, again, trial and error. <laughs> Just keep working it until it looks like something. That's what I do when I do these paintings. I have no guide. I'm just making it up as I go. That's what's fun about this just keep trying different things and 
let's see what happens. Now I start getting really loose with the trees and I kind of like it. Now I'm, I'm really starting to think, okay, well, this is impressionism. So why not just uh, get crazy? And it actually looks pretty cool when, when it's under the black light where that background color is mixing in. It actually looks like snow reflecting the sky, which I thought uh, was a neat little effect. These trees took me a lot longer than I thought they were going to. I'm very fussy, and I was definitely fussing with these trees. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out the... the reflection in the water. Oh, and see what I just did there? Yeah, that just made me have to change my entire <laughs> idea of what I was going to do. So instead of having that beautiful reflection in the water, now I have to blend it out. And give myself some ripples. C'est la vie. Go with the flow. I mean, it's really uh, a forgiving medium in, in most ways. But you just do what you have to. Just keep working it. Work it till you can't work it no mo. This, uh, I really enjoy doing this kind of painting where there is a hidden black light element to it. I don't I don't have a black light <laughs> that I use, uh, you know, except for when I'm doing these paintings. But uh, I like that there's a little surprise when you do see it under a black light. But it's not necessary, you know. I try to make the paintings stand on their own. But, uh, you know, should you have a black light, maybe you have an aquarium with a black light in it and the, this would look cool in your room with your aquarium. I just, uh, I really enjoy thinking out of the box, you know. I would love to get some of that, that paint. It's like invisible, um, invisible, it's invisible, but it glows. So it doesn't have a color to it, um, like, uh, like the neon paints do. It, it dries clear. And then when you look at it under a black light, it's colored. I would love to get some of that, but it is crazy expensive. But I just think about what kind of amazing stuff you could do with that if uh, you could just have like a secret painting on top of your painting. And now I'm just gonna really start fussing <laughs> and blending that out make it match the other side and then trying to figure out that little mountain area what am I going to do there what is that reflection going to look like how am I going to make this work there are definitely some things I would do different 
with this. But that's what we do. We learn, right? You you do it and then that, that, one of the nice things about recording it and watching it is you can say, oh, you know, I should have stopped there or I should have left it like that. And then you learn for the next one. So even if you aren't planning on putting your videos up on YouTube, it's it's really good to to record it just to learn from it because you really do learn a lot by watching yourself paint. And now just trying to bring in some of that pink reflection, a little more of that into the water. And now I'm going to fuss with this some more. And I'm like, mm, no, mm -mm, no. <laughs> I wanted it to, that to look like an inlet, but I don't think I really gave myself enough room. And it wasn't quite just curved enough in general to get that vibe. And I'm going to keep fussing with this for a while until I finally decide that uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to straighten this out. <laughs> just, yep, mm -hmm. no more inlet, just a horizon. That's what we're looking at. I tried. I didn't like the way it worked out. So thankfully, again, this is a very forgiving art form. And that is going to be it. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think if I mess around with it too much, I'm going to regret it. Um, that big drip there uh, kind of ruined my <laughs> plan for having the reflection on a still water. So now we have some wavy water. Tis what it is. I will uh, clean up and I will bring you in for a close up and show you what it looks like under the black light back in a few. Okay, here it is. You can see I got some reflections going on there. Looking nifty. I kind of like the Tim Burton look that's going on with the uh, with the trees. They look a little weird. I don't mind that one bit. I really don't. Because again, it's not really about what it looks like so much up close. I mean, up close, it's like, what's going on there? But when you pull out, It's looking nifty. I think my horizon's a little high. Eh, it's all right. It's, it's still in the lower third. But uh, let's check this out with the black light. Hold tight. Okay, there it is with the black light. Super cool. Absolutely loving this with the black light. The black light really confuses this camera. It's much more vibrant in person. The camera doesn't know what's going on. But you can see the trees actually look pretty cool under the black light. That little bit of neon mixed in kind of makes it look like it's got snow on it and it's reflecting the light from the sky. Super nifty. Right? 
once this dries, I might be able to get a better shot of it. In the black light, this is kind of hard. I can't really get far enough away to fully appreciate it. But there it is. All right, well, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Do check out the description box below for links to uh, all my affiliate links. I'm now a Blick affiliate link. So if you purchase from Blick, as I do quite often, uh, if you use that Blick link, I will make a small commission at no additional cost to you. Same goes for the Amazon link that's in there and the RT is all in. Uh -huh. well, there's lots of links. Uh, so wherever you do your paint shopping, do check out the links. It would be greatly appreciated. Also in the description box is the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find some art for sale and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards. And the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards are available at Amazon now. We, uh, Oh, I wanted to let you guys know that I am going to be having an auction on October 2nd at 6 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned for a sneak peek uh, coming up in the next couple of days of the paintings that will be in that auction. There's going to be some good ones. Some that y'all probably thought were already sold. But uh, yeah, so definitely come back and check that out. I think that's it for, t oh, I almost forgot. Check out the description box for the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. We have lots of fun there. We hope you join us. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.